Uh, okay, all good. Uh, Fraser, how's it going? Yep, good. <laughs> good. Uh, congratulations, Scotland captain. This must be a, an enormously proud moment for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it is. Um, don't know what else I want to say. Yeah, no, it is. Um, it's, uh, I think it's just been a lot of hard work over the last couple of years. I think um, where we, we've been just as a team in general, um, it's been pretty easy for me to come in and, and do the role that I'm doing this week. Um, you know, I've got quite a lot of other guys in the background as well. Obviously, Jamie and Ali, uh, they're as vice captains, um, which is really well done for them. I think Ali, uh, Ali's come on a hell of a lot this year, particularly at Glasgow in, in that leadership role. And, and, and Jamie, obviously, has done that for a long time at, at Scotland and Edinburgh. So to have those two in the background as well is, is great support for me. Uh, Gregor touched on it a little uh, yesterday when we spoke to him, uh, Fraser, but have you kind of paused and, and had a think about how far you've come? You've spoken very honestly and openly in the past about the you know the, the obstacles you had to get over, a lot of bad injuries and other things going on. From from then to now, to be leading out your country tomorrow, have you, have you given any thought to, to wow, that, that's a long way I've come? Uh, not really. It was a long time ago. Um, I, I think a certain part of that was sort of a, a previous part of my life, which has obviously allowed me to go on and, and do what I have done and then shaped, uh, been a big part in shaping who I am and, and how I see things now. Um, other things like injuries, probably more recent injuries, that's just that's just part of rugby. Um, I'm, I'm fairly laid back in, in how I view that part of my career. So, um Obviously, it's been a big deal because I said it, it shapes it shaped me and shaped how I see things and, and how I, I like to act around the squad and, and how I like to treat other people and um, and sort of my my approach to I don't know to just how I see things functioning within a within a group of guys and, and how to try and get the best out of people. It helps shape that. But in, in terms of looking back from where I was to where I am now, I, I don't tend to do that very much. If I'm being honest. And do you think the the rivalry with Stuart or the, the competitiveness with Stuart for that position. I mean, he took his game to a new level and started playing some fantastic rugby and got the, the jersey. Yeah. Have you then had to to do the same to take your game to a new level? Is that is that rivalry helped in a way to to get your game to new heights? Definitely. Um I think people always say it and I I don't think people can sometimes necessarily believe it when they say that they enjoy the competition. Um, but it, it genuinely is great for both myself and Stuart and, and George um, is anyone else hearing Fraser at the moment? no 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 nope. here we now Fraser um, I think we've lost you I've got him back. Yeah, you can hear me now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Sorry. Yeah, Carry okay, on. Sorry. Um, no, I was just saying that um, it, it genuinely is a good thing. Um, for me, obviously, all the positions that we're, we're building great depth now, but for me, I see it as a good thing. Um, you know, I, I enjoy that competition. I think if, if you've got that drive, you know, it annoys, it annoys me, I'm sure it annoys Stuart and, and other people in other positions when they they're either not getting picked or someone else getting picked ahead of them because it, it forces you to to have a look at things that you're doing or maybe things that you're not doing quite so well and then try and develop them and involve your game. So, um, so yeah, I, I do really enjoy it and thrive in that competition. And, and I think it just, I don't know, it focuses you more as well because it makes you realise that the, the more you push yourself, the more you enjoy what you do. And then that just puts you in a better place to be able to play well. Thanks, Fraser. Thanks, Fraser. Um, touching on your form, and Gregor described it as you being in the form of your life. Does leadership come, you know, more easily? Is it is it is it easier to take on that responsibility when you you know that your 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 form and you, and looking after yourself is kind of in a good place anyway? I think if you're playing well, it's easy to lead. Um, I, you know, I've spoken before about in order to lead, you have to be playing well. You you can't be putting yourself in a position where you can be seen as as almost being a hypocrite um, I think it's, it's difficult to 
it's difficult to pull guys with you. Um, so I think obviously playing well is a big part of that. Um, you know, a lot of what I see leadership is how you conduct yourself and how you play. Um, so obviously that's it's a very important part of being able to lead for me. Um, but then, you know, anyone can have a bad game. Um, anyone can have a couple of bad games, but it's, it's about trying to create that consistency so that so that you can have that relationship between you and, and the other guys on the pitch that, you know, sometimes people make mistakes, whether it's a guy that's captain or another guy that's getting a first cap or a 50th cap, whatever it is. Um, but, but having that consistency, knowing that they'll work hard to put it right or that they'll work hard on the pitch or on, on training to try and put it right, you know, it helps pull guys with you and, and helps create that sort of trust between players. When you're when you think about the way that your, you know your your style, I guess, is what you're you're describing there of, of, of captaincy. Do you think of other great captains that you've played with, people that you've looked up to in the past? Is there anyone that that, that springs to mind that that will be an inspiration for you? Um, I don't know. I, I think when you when you play and you're lucky, to, you know, I've played under a lot of a lot of great leaders, perhaps haven't carried the title of captain, but have been great in, the, in their own facet of the game and, and really lead well on, on what they're doing, whether it's set piece defence, running the game from an attack point of view, or being that vocal point, being able to speak well on and off the pitch. I think all you can do is try and be yourself and, and try and pull in bits and pieces from other people that you think fits well with what you're trying to do. So there's probably no one in particular, but but as you go along in, in your career, whatever it is, you'll, you'll, you'll pull in little bits and pieces that you think fit what you're trying to do and, and how you're trying to conduct yourself and lead. And just lastly for me then on the on the game it's Greg like said it's essentially the strongest side that they selected here with an eye on, on finishing off the Six Nations campaign. How important is this match and the you know how strange I guess it is that you have such a little run up to to getting back up and uh, and, and and sort of trying to get to the level that you were at before and back in March. Yeah, it's, it's important for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it's, it's important because it's the first opportunity we get to play for Scotland in seven months, um, which is, is a big thing. You know, every time you play for Scotland, it's a massive honour. And to be able to do it based on, on current circumstances is an even bigger honour. Um, and then obviously it, it's a test match against what will be a really good team, uh, a team that will pose a lot of challenges, particularly up front, particularly from a physicality point of view. Um, so it's important that we, we treat it like that. Um, and then obviously thirdly, running into what will be the end of the six, last year's Six Nations competition. Uh, it's important that we, we hit the ground running um, and not that we, we start where we left off, but that we, we continue developing from where we left off back in March. Cheers. No problem. Uh, Andy? Hi, Fraser. Um, obviously, you'll, you'll have experienced what an empty Murrayfield is like uh, with the Glasgow Edinburgh games recently. I mean, is that going to be especially strange given, you know, when you, you run out with Scotland, the crowd there, it's such, such an, a, yes. a, a stirring effect on you. And, you know, the home record is, is usually so, so strong with, with that backing. Is it going to be strange not having the, those fans there to sort of cheer you on? Yeah, it, it will be strange. Um, you know, I, th I think it's, it's 14 or 15 out of the last 16 home games have been full sellouts. You know, Murrayfield has become um, such a, a huge part of of what we're doing as a team. Um, being able to engage with the fans and, and having that support behind us has been massive. So to, to sit here and say that it's, it wouldn't be uh, different would obviously be a pretty obvious lie. Um, so it, it will be different. Um, but then that's... You know, that just puts the focus back on us in terms of who, how professional we can be in our approach to the game, um, how we can try and create our own energy within the warm-up, how the, the guys that aren't on the field at the time can try and create that atmosphere, but how um, how we create energy and atmosphere by the actions that we do on the pitch, whether that's defensively or, or from attacking point of view. Um, you know, we have to try and, and create that buzz, which to be fair, we do. We try to do it every week anyway. It's just it's probably going to be more important um, without that support behind us in the crowd. Can I just ask, obviously, the, the news came through yesterday that uh, Murrayfield's going to be staging a, a Lions test uh, next summer. Um, I think you've spoken yeah. yourself about, you know, wanting to sort of put yourself in contention for that. But does this, you know, increase your, your appetite for, for that sort of thing, knowing that you could be playing a, such a special match on, on home soil? De definitely. Um, you know, I, I spoke uh, a couple of weeks ago about 
um, just wrote lines as played in in British rugby history, particularly when I was growing up. You know what a um, a huge part of of my rugby upbringing the lines were. So um, to have a, a Lions Test match in Scotland um, will be a massive thing for. Um, you know myself, every other player, but also the whole Scottish rugby uh, and the Scottish rugby public to be able to have a, a home lines um, game uh, on Scottish soil is is a is a big thing, um, and I'm sure whoever gets to play in it, whether there's the Scottish guys involved or not, um, just to be able to have that test at Murrayfield will be will be a big um, a big thing coming June. I think it's June July. Sure, Fraser. No problem. Thanks. I will move on to the.